Come on now, come on. We can't just jump over this because this is a this is a prime passage for them. They're going, come on, give it to us, explain it to us, or do something with it. Is it, you know what? Are, what are you talking about? Lunar Sabbaths. Oh, the Lunar Sabbatarians. Uh, oh boy. Hey, hey, look. Oh. There's a lot of them that listen, and and oh, good day to you guys, and thank you for listening. Wait. All right. Keith. So, so wait, you said so you said Keith what now? <laughs> Well, you said my name. I'm, I'm, I'm excited. Because, what you because we're, we're hey, no, come on. We we highlight the word Moedim, right? Uh, in 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 the second verse, mm-hmm. and the first thing that comes up is the Sabbath. Mm-hmm. Now, so it's really interesting. So, notice how verses two and verse four are almost identical word for word, and the reason is that, and, and this is something that we've seen before. It's called uh, resumptive repetition. It's when Scripture goes on a tangent. Then when it returns from the tangent, it repeats the last thing it said before the tangent. Mm-hmm. And so verse 2 starts off, he says, okay, now I'm going to tell you about the Moadim, and the, uh, and you shall proclaim them as holy proclamations. And then he talks about Shabbat. And then in verse 4, he goes again, and he says, these are the Moadim of Yehovah, holy convocations, which you shall proclaim in their appointed mm-hmm. time. So why, did, why does verse 4 repeat verse 2? And the reason is that verse 3 is a tangent. Uh, it was a tangent that was inserted there, because of the association, that's another thing we see very often, that there's this principle of association that when you, uh, you know, things we've will be juxtaposed. Yeah, we've highlighted a uh, lot of those um, throughout the Torah portions yeah, so far, well, haven't we? So here, here's an example of, by the principle of association, okay, we're talking about the holy proclamations. I'm just going to quickly mention Shabbat. And then I'm going to get back to the Moadim. Mm-hmm. And that's why in verse 4, he has to actually repeat himself, word for word almost. Again, so uh, here, I'll, I'll read you vo- both verses as my translation. The, uh, and you shall say to them, the appointed times of Yehovah, which you shall proclaim them as holy proclamations. These are my appointed times. That's verse 2. Verse 4. These are the appointed times of Yehovah, holy proclamations. You shall proclaim them in their appointed time. Well, why do that? Why does verse 4 repeat verse 2? And, and that's clearly what we would, uh, call resumptive repetition. Mm-hmm. And what it essentially does is it puts verse 3 as a parenthetical note. It's in parentheses. And um, and so to say then, oh well, you know, it says in the the um, Moadim are the the moon is for Moadim, and then verse three has Shabbat, so therefore the the Shabbat's based on the moon. That that's ridiculous. Um, <laughs> Shabbat is a perpetual cycle that goes back to creation. Mm-hmm. It's been kept by the Jewish people perpetually uh, as an unbroken uh, seven day cycle going back. And that's why you have in every language of the world, or hundreds of languages of the world, all have the, the seventh day of the week. You know, in English, we call it Saturday, which is the day of Saturn. But in most languages, it's not called Saturday. In most languages, it's called, like in Spanish, Sabado. In Hebrew, it's called Yom HaShabbat. It's got nothing to do with Saturn. Yom HaShabbat. Mm-hmm. In many other languages, um, you, and you could look this up, there's hundreds of languages that re- preserve the seventh day of the week, the name of it as Shabbat. Mm-hmm. Um, now, one of, the th- one of the things that they'll do is they'll point to the Jewish encyclopedia from, I believe it's 1901. And the reason that's on the internet is because it's, it, the, um, the uh, copyright has run out. So it's very easily accessible. Uh, the problem with the Jewish encyclopedia from 1901 is that it makes all kinds of claims and statements which aren't necessarily true. Um, and that's actually true of every encyclopedia. If an encyclopedia tells you that the sky is pink, you've got to say, okay, well, what's the evidence that the sky is pink? Mm-hmm. Um, just because it's an encyclopedia doesn't mean it's true. Uh, one of the greatest examples is Wikipedia, the notoriously inaccurate and unreliable encyclopedia that literally you, listener, can go in today and change, and you can say... At, at, at the drop of a dime, you, you can change anything. Literally, you can go in to the article that talks about the sun going around the, the earth and change it, or did I just say that right? The, the earth going around the sun <laughs> and change it to say the sun goes around the earth, and it will then be in Wikipedia. Now, it mo- might not be for a very long time, but there's actually a, a very um, uh, infamous example where I believe it's the, the prime minister of Norway... Uh, someone went into his web page, into his Wikipedia page, and, and he didn't create that page. Some, you know, somebody on the internet did. Mm-hmm. Um, but they went into the Wikipedia page and talked about the prime minister of Norway, and they changed it to say that he spent two years in prison for a crime that I'm not going to mention. Mm-hmm. But it's a very serious crime that that is, you know, is is not not some, you know, it, it is a shameful crime. Um, but I won't mention it because there's children listening. Mm -hmm. It had to do with children. Um, It only was on on Wikipedia for less than 24 hours before someone went and changed it and fixed it and said, you know, obviously it's not true. We all know he didn't go to prison for that. Mm -hmm. That was, you know, it's a vicious lie that somebody who doesn't like him made up. But during that time, during that less than 24 hours, while it appeared on the internet, 
it, uh, on Wikipedia, it was then quoted by hundreds of news uh, outlets. <laughs> and now throughout the internet, it's reported as fact that the Prime Minister of Norway, maybe by now the oh former Prime Minister, I don't know, goodness. that he spent two years in prison for a, a crime against children. And, and it just goes to show, just because something's in an encyclopedia doesn't mean it's true. What, so the encyclo- Jewish encyclopedia from 1901 says that the, the, the Shabbat used to be based on the moon, but then that was changed. Now, what I challenge the people to provide is a Jewish source, and I don't mean the Jewish encyclopedia. I mean an ancient Jewish source that shows that the, um, that the, that the, the Shabbat cycle used to be based on the moon. Show me a single Jewish source. Now, we talk about the, the biblical calendar and how the biblical calendar was originally, the month was originally based on the moon, and now it's based on a, cal- a calculation that was uh, developed by Hill II to the year 359. Now, I can show you that in the Jewish encyclopedia, but I can also, more importantly, show in ancient Jewish sources, mm-hmm. and specifically, even more importantly than the Hill II the thing, I can show you the, the Jewish sources that predate Hill II that talk in great detail about seeing the new moon and sighting the new moon and sighting the new moon in the time when the temple still stood. So I can show you those Jewish sources, and there are numerous Jewish sources like that. What I can't show you is a single Jewish source anywhere from ancient times that says that we Jews are now observing the, the Shabbat because it is the eighth day of the new moon or the seventh day of the new moon and the, and the Shabbat tide of the lunar cycle. There's not a single source anywhere that says anything even remotely like that. That's a fiction. It's a fantasy invented by the Jewish encyclopedia. Actually, it wasn't invented by the Jewish encyclopedia. We know where it came from. It came from German Bible scholars in the 1800s, the late 1800s. They discovered hundreds and actually thousands of documents from ancient Babylon, and they came to the conclusion that everything in the Bible must come from Babylon because there's so many similarities between the culture of the Bible and, and what they believed was the culture of Babylon. Mm-hmm. And it started this whole movement that they called Bibel und Babel, which is German for Bible and Babylon. And they said, okay, well, we know that God didn't create the world in six days and rest in the seventh. So it, so the lunar, the Sabbath must come from something in nature. And they decided that, well, the closest thing is the lunar cycle. The lunar cycle is between 29 and 30 days, Mm -hmm. and four Shabbats is 28 days. And apparently these scholars couldn't uh, uh, do very good mathematics. They couldn't count. Um, Because actually, if you do 28 days, you end up with the lunar cycle uh, an extra day and a half Mm -hmm. each month. Mm -hmm. So what do you do with that? Well, the lunar Sabbatarians say, well, that's an extra Shabbat. It's a 72-hour or 48-hour long Shabbat. Um, <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous. Uh, I don't know how they would have uh, done the mana in the desert where it says that they had to collect a collected double portion on Friday. Well, it should have said, they sh- you know, if lunar Sabbatarians are right, it should say that they should collect a triple or quadruple portion. And then think about counting seven Shabbats from the, from the day of the waving of the Omer mm-hmm. all the way until Shavuot. Well, if you count seven Shabbats based on the lunar cycle, the lunar Sabbath theory, you end up with 52 or 53 days. Mm-hmm. And why is that? Because the end of each month has a 29th and or, and or a 30th day. Um, it has either 29 or 30 days, and at least 29 days. There's no such thing as a lunar, lunar month with less than 29 days. Um, back to Bebel and Babel, they said, okay, it must be related to the lunar cycle. And this was a theory. It was speculation. And there's a lot of things in, in many encyclopedias. You can look in the Encyclopedia Britannica, and there'll be things in there that are speculation, that are mm-hmm. theories. Um, and sometimes they're pre- presented as fact. That happens. Um, that happens in every encyclopedia and sure. in every field of study. Uh, and you always have to ask the question, what is the source? Well, they were able to point to a source in Babylon, which had a concept called Shabbatum. The Shabbatum in Babylon was the 15th day of the lunar cycle, and it was considered an inauspicious day. It was a day of, of, um, uh, which was considered cursed. And so they wouldn't go out to battle on a Shabbatum, and they wouldn't, they wouldn't uh, build a house on a Shabbatum. And so the scholars, these German uh, anti-Semitic scholars in the 19th century, decided, oh, Shabbat must have started out as a lunar cycle, and the Shabbatum in Babylon proves that it's actually the same thing as the Jewish Shabbat. Um, uh, based on the lunar cycle. Uh, now, if you look at the Shabbatum of Babylon and the Shabbat of the Hebrew Bible, they're two fundamentally different things. The Shabbatum of Babylon is a cursed day, and that's why you're not doing work. You don't want to do work on a cursed day because your work will not turn out well. In the Bible, it's not a cursed day. It's a sanctified day. It's a holy day. It says he created the Shabbat and sanctified it. It's the holiest, it's the holy day of the holiest day of the week. It's not, it's not a curse day. We don't do uh, work to remember that God created the world in six days and rested on the seventh. It's, mm-hmm. it's fundamentally different than the Shabbat tomb of Babylon. 
The reason they have the same, a similar name is that in Semitic languages, the word Shabbat means rest. Mm. And so the Babylonians rested on the day they considered to be cursed in the lunar cycle. The Hebrews were resting on a perpetual seven-day cycle going back to creation when God himself rested on the seventh day. And there it is. And there it is. Kate, do you reckon he's a little riled up about it? What do you think? So, so okay, so so one, just only one, only one simple thing I wanted to bring up uh, on ch- chapter 23 was just this idea that he says, these are my appointed feasts. So the word appointed, the thing that was so interesting to me was that when I was invited, the only word I heard was that uh, I've not changed my appointment with you, but I was not studying Hebrew. I did not know about Moedim. I did not know. And that the communication to me was that there was an appointment. And this idea that there's an appointment, so addressing the issue that Nehemiah just talked about, and what you brought up, Jonah, regarding those that are going by the lunar Sabbath or whatever, think of this. If the creator of the universe has an appointment book, mm-hmm. and in his appointment book, it's written, meet with my people on this day. Mm-hmm. Why wouldn't we want to do it? Amen. I mean, I mean I'm mean, i just, I'm asking this tradition, question. Tradition! Yeah, tradition! 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 Tradition has like, I've heard all of. these That's things. Thinkable. All these I've things. Heard. Tradition! <laughs> So, so basically, the thing that I want, I, more than anything that I wanted to say, and, and we did do an overview of chapter 23, but more than anything is that these things that we're talking about here, these are actually in his appointment book. They're actually on a calendar. In the throne room, maybe it says, oh, I've got an appointment with my people. And then the people are down here saying, that's not convenient. That doesn't work for us. We want to use a different calendar. And that's why I've been focusing on this, this idea of time, because I think there's a lot of people that are listening, that do know about the Lunar Sabbath, they do know about the Moedim, they know about this, but there's a lot of folks that we're reaching who have no idea mm-hmm. what we're talking about. Mm-hmm. They just want to know, what, what, what do you mean? You mean to say that God actually has a calendar? Yes, and guess what? It's not the Gregorian calendar. It's not based on the Edict of Pontifus Maximus. Amen. It's not based on Pope Gregory. This calendar is set, it's hardwired in the mm. earth, and we can see it. In fact, I want to tell you guys just... As people are going, as they listen to this, you know, whatever day this will this will come out, you know, there's a chance for people to actually look up and see God's clock. And so that's why I've been focusing on this. It's been 10 years on this issue of Leviticus 23, mm-hmm. and this chapter is just important because it lays out so clearly when these appointments are and, and, and how we're, you know, Amen. how we're to meet with them. So and, and you that's, su- that's my long and short of it. You were surprised.